All right. Hello, everybody. This is uh, Nicholas Tanak with Your Kingy Friends. And um, it's Easter weekend, 2021. And I have a magnificent guest with me today. She's from Boston. Um, we've been talking quite a bit. Um, we had some scheduling things, uh, but everything just worked out. Now she's here. Yes. We're, we're going to talk about, of course, we're going to talk about impact play and sadism and humiliation. And, you know, um, we're going to have fun. We're going to have fun. And um, please bow down to and worship the glorious Jay Desire. Say hi. Oh, hello. Thank you for having me on this. I'm looking forward to this talk. Oh, thank you. Thank you for being here. So, um, okay, before we begin, like really begin, why don't you just tell us a little bit about yourself? Okay, so I am a pro dom. Um, I've been doing pro work for about probably roughly between six and a half to seven years at this point. Um, but I've been in the lifestyle for 12 to 13 years. Uh, have always considered myself kinky to some extent. I'm absolutely a sensualist, um, absolutely a voyeur. Uh, one of the best things. <laughs> and um, yeah, I just love having fun. I'm a very sensual person. I love um, toying with people and teasing people. Uh, that was from a long, long time ago. I was a, a huge tease in middle school and high school. <laughs> <laughs> I was talking to, oh my God, I was talking to um, someone a couple of days ago who was like, um, you know, for me, there's tease and denial, and my favorite part is the denial. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, okay, before, I want to talk about, you know, being a sensualist and being a voyeur, but before we begin that, let's just talk about every dom seems to have a specialty, you know, or they're what we call a Jacqueline of all trades, you know, which will, they'll like pretty much try almost, they have their limits, but like, you know, whatever the client wants. And then you have people who are like extreme sadists and that's like, they just do sadistic stuff or people who specialize in leather or specialize in pony play or specialize in that. Do you have any specialties or are you, are you more kind of, um, I really love trying all sorts of things. Um, but I'd say that, you know, my specialties definitely lie with, um, sensation play, sensory deprivation, bondage, um, orgasm control, which is one of my favorites. Um, tease and denial. <laughs> Heavy on the denial. You know. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I can't say that, it's also heavy on the tease. Um, but I'd say that those are my main ones. Uh, the only other one I would probably mention is feminization because I love teaching um, you know, men or, you know, folks who want to be more feminine, how to be a bit more feminine. So. Okay. We'll get into that, but let's, let's ease into it. Let's ease into it. We definitely ain't going to get into that. Trust me. But let's ease into it with um, being a sensualist, basically. Now, throughout your kinky life, were you, would you be the kind of person being sensual to somebody else? or someone being central to you? Would you be like the receipt? You could be on the giving or the receiving end. Oh, absolutely both. Um, I am very uh, selfish, so I like it both ways. <laughs> I am also a switch. Um, I am a dominant leaning switch. Um, so I love having sensation done to me, um, whether it's bottoming or topping. Uh, and that you know includes things like worship, um, I love teaching someone how to touch me just right, um, okay. massage me, etc. But I also love topping for sensual play because I know how good it feels. So I'm sort of vicariously living through the other person as I'm touching them and teasing them and bringing them to new heights because in my head, I'm like, oh, I know what this feels like. 
and uh, they're having a really good time, and, and I'm in control of that good time. <laughs> now, when you say touch just right, that's that really kind of um, put a light bulb in my head, so to speak. You know, because we, I think for most part, people want to be good lovers or people want to be good in at what they do. You know what I mean? Like I, I'm not gonna lie. I trained on a cantaloupe on how to lick a clitoris. You know, good boy. <laughs> Upper left. You know, like I was a teenager. And my mom's like, "What's all over your face?" <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious. So, okay, I would. Is it safe to say? And correct me if I'm wrong. Mm -hmm. Is it safe to say that everybody has their own way of being touched just right, or is there kind of a almost general sense of being touched right or touching someone right? Of course, it's sensual. It comes sensual. Yes. Of course, that that goes well. Right. <laughs> but yeah. I'd say everyone is pretty unique. Um, one of the things that I love is really watching some, again, the voyeur in me. Oh, yeah, um, well, next. <laughs> right, but this goes into that because um, I love watching someone's body movements, their motions, et cetera, when it comes to touching them because you really get to know, can I touch this person in this spot with my nails and them not be ticklish? Um, or grab them a certain way. And so learning somebody's body is really, um, again, unique and different for everybody. And finding those right spots and the right combination of sensations to send someone to the moon um, is the very best. I mean, I think everybody enjoys touch a little bit of a different way. Um, I do get a lot of people who like how soft my touch is. Um, so I'd say that that's pretty across the board. Um, but for the most part, when it comes to trying to gather different types of sensation for a specific person, it's really unique. Okay, and that kind of leads to voyeurism. Um, I would imagine that the voyeurism kind of teaches you, or whoever is the voyeur, uh, on how to touch. Would you oh, say yeah. that's true? Now, Okay, here in Jersey, and I'm in Jersey now, New York, New Jersey, um, there's a lot of ways you could see stuff going on. First of all, there's the typical, there are parties, of course, there are, um, you know, festivals and events, which, you know, you go to and people are hanging from the ceilings or dressed up or getting flogged or whatever, but then you got like, for lack of a better word, you know, the, the kind of dirty parts of the of, of town where it's like adult videos that have that back room where like 20 people are there and like a man in a French made outfit is just getting jerked off on by like 20 guys, you know? <laughs> <laughs> you know um, and then you got, you got people who like in London and even here, something called dogging, which is, um, people having sex in public. Mm -hmm. A lot of people like to have sex in public. You know, you get arrested. Um, you know, and there's so there's so many different ways to kind of view people. And even people who aren't being overly sexual, just being affectionate, I think. I mean, like you can be at a supermarket or a restaurant or just on the street, depending on how populated the area is, you know, where you could see a very sensual relationship in front of you. Mm -hmm. So what what do you, A, what do you see the most and what do you like the most? Um, honestly, when I say I'm a voyeur, I, I like the intimate, um, gosh, the more intimate acts that I can see. Okay. And that's being really up close. Like I love having people kiss in front of me um, because I just like watching the motion of their lips. I like seeing if they're open, opening their eyes or um, their face flushes. It's all those micro expressions that I kind of get off on. Like their knees uh, buckle? What's that? Like their knees buckling? Yeah, yeah. Um, and I love watching it when somebody like first comes to me and their eyes are all dilated. Um, 
And it just, it's like, oh, you're excited and nervous and I love this. <laughs> But those types of things, I definitely, you know, I've been to swinger parties and I love just watching people connect in that very physical way. Um, and things like even at clubs, when you go and watch scenes, the way a dominant will touch someone's back and you know that they have this really lovely connection, those things just bring so much love to my heart. <laughs> okay. So we're going to get to orgasm control and feminization. That's always a big topic. It's a great mm -hmm. topic. One of my favorites. Um, but let's just, <clears throat> we didn't even like get started with the regular questions. So what was your very, very first session like? Oh, gosh. So uh, little no, I have a terrible memory. Generally speaking, my long-term memory is shot. <laughs> But I remember one of my first sessions and I remember it being, I was so nervous and uh, so excited at the same time. I was like, oh my goodness, somebody is paying me to do these filthy things to them. <laughs> um, and it was really lovely because the person and I, we really connected. We really enjoyed a lot of the same activities and I really enjoyed his face when he was bound down and I was just like on top of him straddling his chest and just kind of scratching him and just that energy with him eyes rolling in the back of his head everything it was really wonderful um so after that I was kind of hooked even more <laughs> and I didn't want it to ever end and I don't think it ever will okay we'll continue back but we had a question from Alex Perez, mistress, you should always capitalize the M in mistress. Mm -hmm. Mistress, why is it happen that when I wear a panty or thongs, I started to act and think like sissies? My guess is you've been conditioned by um, videos and porn that you've watched and that um, you desire to be feminized and you really should. You should definitely try it out if you haven't already. And I'm very happy that you're wearing panties and thongs because I love panties and thongs on men. Okay, sure well, <laughs> that's just a sneak peek, people, of the feminization stuff. But we got one more question before we get into it. I'll, I promise we'll get right into it. Um, when starting out, regardless of what you do, if you're a dominatrix, if you're a bookkeeper, computer programmer, even if you're just in a relationship, you're going to make mistakes. Mm -hmm. right? Everybody makes mistakes. We're human. Um, can you, do you remember one of the, or two or three, but, but just like what mistakes did you make when just starting out? Uh, I think I was pretty lucky coming from the, um, the lifestyle. I had attended a lot of events. I had attended a lot of intensives. Um, so I was able to sort of, I think, not make as many mistakes um, going in. But I do remember being a young Dom and kind of probably not communicating my boundaries well enough. And nobody really ever stepped over a boundary to a point where I regret not saying something because um, it was all an experience and whatnot. But I know looking back, I would tell myself or a younger Dom that, you know, always set your boundaries and keep them. Like it's not worth um, allowing someone to try to step over your boundaries or have to have, you know, a more serious conversation after the scene or fun ends. Um, that's pretty much what I would say. Yeah, and plus people forget that this is, you're doing this for the goddess or the mistress. Mm -hmm. You're not necessarily, I mean, everyone thinks it's because of them or I'm paying for it. So it's, it's my thing and I make the rules. No, you don't, you don't make the rules. You're yeah. going there. So you don't make the rules. Like one of the things I love about being submissive when I am is that I don't have to think, I don't have to make decisions. You know yeah. what I mean? Every <laughs> it's a beautiful place to be in. But you, you do have a lot of these guys who are, you know, they are looking for a specific service. And I mean, honestly, we are, a lot of us are service tops. I, I will admit, I am definitely a service top. I love giving people what they desire. 
as long as I'm in control of it. <laughs> But for those people who do seek it, they can be, you know, a bit more ornery if they're not getting their entire way. And it's like, well, you also don't understand what a mistress is then. <laughs> yeah. Nothing like a bratty sub, you know, it doesn't understand, you yep. know, I mean, there's, don't get me wrong. That's a whole kink, you know, like a bratty kitten or stuff like that. Oh, absolutely. But it's yeah. just not my kink. <laughs> Shout out to Tangle Blue. She's a bratty kitten. But she's so adorable, you know. She's awesome. Okay, Planet. I'm sorry. Plays ACC says, "Have you ever been to Europe? If you have, where?" Uh, I have been to Europe. Um, it's been some time since I've been there, but I've been all over. I've been to Spain, France, Italy, Switzerland, Netherlands, London, UK, um, all over the place. Were some of these trips? kink related or they're just personal travel uh most of them were personal travel i did go to um a couple things in london um but that's pretty much it most of it was when i was younger and before my kinky time i am dying to get over to uh what is it the german fetish ball oh i heard that's pretty intense yeah oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> okay so um Let's go right into the feminization. Now, there are a lot of men out there who have um, significant others and they're scared mm -hmm. or ashamed to talk that they like to wear women's clothing or anything like that. Um, they feel that, you know, uh, their significant other will leave them or tell on them or it won't be kept a secret. You know, I mean, I do kinky stuff. Obviously, I have my own show. I don't care who knows. Um, <laughs> You're out. But, yeah, I, I, I've, I've probably said I own a couple French made outfits, a straight jacket, and a male tassie device. I probably, you know, I probably said it like almost every other episode. So, <laughs> I've been doing this for years. So, um, all right. So, what advice would you give to somebody? who is in that situation, who's never told one person ever that they have desire to become feminized. Even, you know, just temporarily, maybe just for a day or something. Yeah, I just say start small. You know, if you have the desire to do something like that, um, especially if you're, I know it's difficult for a lot of people, especially in longer term relationships, um, but start small. Just be like, oh, you can even say, you can put your, you know, wife's panties on. Say, oh, these kind of feel nice. Uh, what do you think, honey? You know? <laughs> and see so if you're like, oh, I really like the way they feel. Because oftentimes women's clothes feel so much better on than men's clothes. And you can even just go with that. Say, oh, you know, these are so much more comfortable. What do you think? Do you, what about these thigh highs? Just try it out. That's all I'm saying is uh, it's really hard getting over that hump for sure, but start small and see how it goes. And of course, you know, start off with panties. Yeah. What's that? Start off with panties. Oh, yes, always. And please, well, no, I'm not sending it unsolicited photos, but I do love men in panties. Post them to Twitter so I can see. <laughs> So, okay, let's talk about panties. Silk, satin, or cotton? Oh, silk and lace together. Ah, oh, okay. I forgot that voice. <laughs> oh. <laughs> together are unstoppable as far as I'm concerned. Full butt or thumb? I like cheeks. So I like the cheeks to kind of peek out. Um, it's something I can just kind of like tap on a little bit. <laughs> I like to peek out, but I don't, as far as thongs are concerned, I like them sometimes, but nothing gets me like a cheeky panty. <laughs> are you making notes? <laughs> yes, I'm making notes. <laughs> I like peeks. Something that peeks out. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, so... <sighs> Okay, so let's say I find you. I'm in one of those relationships. Not one person knows my secret. 
Mm -hmm. I come to you. I follow the protocol. Um, um, respectful and polite. I don't just, you know, send you a message. Can I be your slave? Can I be your sissy slut? <laughs> I go through the protocol and stuff like that. And I'm about to have a first session with you. Mm -hmm. Take us through the process. Um, so my sessions, generally, I like someone to fill out my booking form. Um, I'll send them all my information, my terms, things like that. Just make sure we're all on the same page. Um, once they follow those protocols and we sort of get to know one another, um, they'll end up in my studio. They'll end up standing in front of me. We'll go over some of my rules, expectations, things like that. Um, you know, I have my own positions that I like having my submissives learn basically because I like having access and I want them to be able to quick get into those access points for me. Um, and then if it's something like panties, I will absolutely have panties out. I, I love thigh highs on men. So I have several thigh highs that I'll lay out. Have you pick one, you know, and kind of start to teach you a little bit about how I like to be seduced because it is a two-way street. And I am very sensual. I like to take things very slowly and mindfully. And I like other people to be just as mindful of me as I am of them. So I'll teach them, you know, essentially how to seduce me in various ways throughout our play together so that we can both enjoy it and my inner voyeur can be happy. <laughs> Interesting. So when it comes to feminization, and like I say, uh, I always say this, correct me if I'm wrong, well, I have this theory, right? <clears throat> There's the feminized, the very pristine, with the makeup perfect, the wig perfect, the dress, thigh highs always snap perfect, everything. Everything's perfect. And, you know, that's the, that's gearing more towards the French maid type, you know, service type person on one end of the spectrum. Then you got the other end of the spectrum where they be like, and they like to become dirty sluts. Oh, so, <laughs> so which side? With that being said, if if you agree with that, with that being said, which side do you more lean to? God, I'd I'd have to say somewhere in the middle. Okay. I love an, I love a dirty, elegant lady. So. <laughs> <laughs> I like someone who looks really elegant, but I can pull up her skirt and do all sorts of filthy things to her. <laughs> That's a good answer. I'm, I'm using that as a quote. <laughs> I love a dirty, elegant lady. Okay, so, <clears throat> excuse me. So, whenever I put on women's clothing, which has been a, quite a while, um, Whenever I do it, I become just submissive. I don't act effeminate at all. It's just, you know, um, and it's not a thing I'm against. It's just, it's just, I guess, my style. It's just my thing. Would you say, like, but you push towards the femininity. Would you say that, like, everywhere from the walking to the sitting to the voice, everything like that? I, I definitely have a lot more sluts than I have elegant ladies. Um, but I do enjoy dressing someone up and taking them sort of through a role. Um, they don't necessarily have to be feminine um, or have any sort of effeminate um, motions, things like that. I do like it if they move slowly and sensually though, but that's just strictly because I like you to take your time and enjoy yourself moving through a space. Um, it's very mindful and uh, to me very sensual, but Besides that, I mean, I really do like sluts. I mean, I like using people, so, you know. <laughs> you know, talking about walking slow, if, it, if, it's, if you're a male and the first time wearing heels, you're walking slow regardless. <laughs> 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 so Place ACC says, sadist or sensual? Well, she is, in the beginning, she did say she was a sensualist, but would you say you're sadistic as well? Well, a, a, when I say sensualist, all, people always think a sensualist is soft and gentle. 
No, 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 no. A sensualist is somebody who enjoys all different senses. And impact is a wonderful sense. Like when you have that noise, whips, you know, the chains. I'm, and I love CBT. So honestly, like, <laughs> I can't say that I'm not a sadist. <laughs> okay, we'll get to that. But before we get to that, let's, so stay tuned. Cock and ball tours, tr torture and impact play coming next. But right now we're going to talk about orgasm control. So when it comes to feminization, um, and it's not exclusively on feminization, but it's very popular in feminization, um, there's chastity. Sometimes it's like a natural chastity device. Sometimes it's mental chastity. Is that something that you um, practice? Oh, yes. Yes. Okay. So when it was, do you have anybody in chastity right now? I do, yes. Uh, I have a few people in chastity right now. Um, some of them, most of them I would say are in mental chastity because I actually prefer that they have access to my organs um, so that I can tell them to edge for me. Um, I love making them wait to be in my presence, to actually orgasm. And I like making that really hard for them to get to and they have to please me so i prefer that they're in mental chastity and sometimes i'll allow them to you know they might be able to orgasm one person in particular right now um he has to ask me permission to orgasm and if i'm not available well that's too bad um otherwise you know we'll go back to he has to send me panty pics and he can only orgasm on days where he wears panties Okay. So. Now, when it comes when it comes to actual devices, mm -hmm. um, do you prefer silicone, plastic, or metal? Metal, by yeah. far. Metal, by far. What's the longest you've had someone in chastity for? Um, Without coming. Not too long. I'd say about two months. Okay. Yeah. I'm not that mean. Well, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now when it comes to orgasm control, obviously if people are holding out for a long time, sometimes they can't control themselves. What happens then if like, like they don't have permission you know, they know eventually they'll get permission, but like they don't have permission and then boom. Explosion happens, you know. What's the the? How do you react to that? If you ruined my orgasm, I'm going to ruin your orgasm. So <laughs> that's what will happen the next time. I'm right now in that too. <laughs> Going to that's a good one. <laughs> Your orgasm. Okay. All right. And then Alex Perez asks, Mistress, yes, good on the capital M, sir. Um uh, whenever I watch a porn video, I want to be like that alpha guy, but in reality, I love to be treated like sissies by women. So how can I become alpha matcha guy? Don't. <laughs> <laughs> Come to the dark side. <laughs> we have all the good candy. <laughs> Come to the... We have the good candy. <laughs> That's good. That's a good one. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> um, impact play. Now, there are floggers. There's whips. There's canes. There's paddles. There's a million and one things. Um, what is your personal favorite? Hmm. That was a tough question. Um. I'd, I'm going to say there's two implements I like. They're probably equal. 
my first love of impact was always a crop because it's kind of like an extension oh, yeah. of the end, you know, it, there is this very domly look to a crop. Yeah, they look awesome and they sound. They really do. Oh yeah. yeah, and you can use it nice and gentle, but then it can also be really awful. Mm -hmm. um, and it's great for CBT. Uh, as for yeah. the other item, I love whips. They're just the sinuous nature of them, the, uh, the sound it can make. And just the fact that it's a great toy to fuck with people. Um, because for those who uh, really don't like whips or are afraid of using them, I always like bringing it out, blindfolding them, putting them up against a wall, and then um, using it super gently on them. And they like, look, you don't have to have it be mean. It can also be a nice and gentle and sensual experience. Definitely. Okay. And then you crack it by their ear. <laughs> let's get um <laughs> let's get a little more hardcore with cock and ball torture. C B T. What is the most brutal thing that you can remember you doing? I think from like an outsider's point of view, the worst thing I've ever done was sort of butterfly a cock and balls to a board. It looks like the ugliest butterfly you'd ever see. Um, but for me- What, you nailed it? Oh, no, um, lots of needles. Oh, okay. <laughs> I love needles. Um, but I really like prolonged CBT, where you spend a lot of time and go really slowly using canes, tying it up, ball busting, to the point where you have some nice, you know, marks and things, um, and that you leave the person to go home nice and sore, so that they remember you for a few days afterwards, if not a week. <laughs> yeah, every time they sit down. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, there's a movie called, um, Maitres, which is, I guess, French for mistress, and it's Gerard Depardieu. It's in the 70s. It's kind of like an art house film. It's about a guy who breaks into a house. It turns out that the woman is a dominatrix who lives in the house, mm -hmm. and the guy ends up staying there and helping out. And one of the things, and it's a real, they really do it in the movie for real life, is they nail the guy's cock and balls to a piece of wood. Yeah. <sighs> It's it's on my to do list. Yeah, ch ch but check out the movie. It's a it's an interesting movie, and it's like a love story too, which I love. Um, but it is it's, it's very romantic. <laughs> it is. I mean, it's very artsy. It's a little long, but I you know I love the subject matter and everything like that. Now, um, couples, couples and education. You do some couple work. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So tell us about that. Well, I honestly, I kind of started with some friends of ours um, when I first, well, a long time ago when we were in the uh, kink community, we had a couple who we had swung with a long time ago and we're still friends today. And um, they're a great couple. They were always so um, nervous about kink. And that was really the first consult I think I ever had was kind of walking them through um, some of the... Uh, the good parts about kink <laughs> and not the stereotypes. Um, and I think I do get contacted by couples from time to time who are looking to have me either teach them safe ways of doing something, um, which I think everyone should do, <laughs> whether it's by contacting a dom or you know educating yourself online. You always wanna learn the safety tips. Um, but besides that, I think just connecting, like a lot of women have a hard time getting into a femdom role, especially they might have switchy tendencies, um, but a lot of women tend to like immediately lean towards sub or bottom um, and never really get to enjoy feeling what it's like to be a top um, or dominant. And walking them through those steps and especially with a husband who is also a switch, but usually plays the top role is really great because then you see as they grow through the process, 
how much more they're getting from the experience and broadening their horizons. Now, does jealousy ever come into play? I've never really dealt with a whole lot of jealousy. Um, honestly, I, I'm bisexual and I'm way more attracted to women. So I think the women know that. <laughs> <laughs> if anything, I think it's more like the guy's like, what is she doing? <laughs> I might be flirting with your wife. <laughs> All right. So um, on a low note, we'll get a, we'll get a happy in a bit. But um, how are you dealing? I mean, it's been a crazy year with this pandemic. And especially for anyone who's a professional dominatrix, it's their, a lot of them, their careers have changed. Some people just closed up shop. Mm -hmm. Some some dungeons have closed up shop, you know what I mean? Um, how are you dealing with it? Um, personally or professionally? <laughs> you get both. Um, I mean, personally, I'm like everyone, I'm super fatigued. I am yeah. desperate to get back to events, um, to classes that actually happen in person. I'm desperate to see friends and family. Um, because professionally, you know, I've been trying to keep myself as safe as possible. Um, I did shut down for quite some time at the beginning of the pandemic um, because we nobody knew what was going on. Um, as, you know, things seem to come to light with the pandemic, with COVID, I started opening myself up to limited sessions with people I knew really well. Um, I wasn't seeing anybody new. I was only seeing people I knew who were doing really well with distancing. Um, and of course, wearing masks, sanitizing everything like twice. Yeah. Um, and, um, you know, doing all the things like masking up, taking temperatures, doing all the stuff that they do at the hospitals, essentially. <laughs> and, uh, and I'm sure I was talking to some, some doms who, um, they they used COVID as a whole way to make hospital role play. Yep. You know what I mean? So like you got the mask, temperature taken, everything. Like that. So oh yeah. <laughs> instead, of the, instead of going to the doctor, you go to the disease. It's smart. <laughs> Fetishize it, right? Definitely. Yeah. All right. Plays ACC is back. Electricity on the balls. Have you oh. ever done? That? Oh yeah. If you know what like a zapper is. It's kind of like a cattle prod and it's real fun to, you know, blindfold someone or do it first and then blindfold them and say it's coming. You'll just have to wait to see when. <laughs> but yes, I have done that many times. and I love the violet wand on balls, especially for somebody who's new to um, electricity and CBT. You can go really slowly, ramp it up, see what their thresholds are for pain, et cetera. So yeah, definitely done that. Awesome. And okay, back to COVID real quick, and then we're going to make it happy again. Um, <clears throat> things are slowly becoming back to normal. It's never going to be 100%, but there's, I believe personally that there is going to be a semblance of kind of normalcy going out. People will be able to go out and stuff like that, especially with the, the vaccination and stuff like that. Um, let's say the day comes where you really don't have to worry about it anymore. It's like polio. You, if you get a polio vaccine when you're a kid, you don't, you, I'm not worried about getting polio. You know what I mean? Um, but, but let's just say things are as back to normal as they could be. What do you do? Where do you go? Oh, travel. <laughs> What's the first place really, you go to? What's that? What, where's the first place you go to? Oh, that's a tough one. Um, Probably to visit my brother in San Diego. Probably that oh, first. San Diego is beautiful. I love San Diego. It's so nice. Um, San Francisco, New York. The crookedest Florida. street. Yeah. What's that? The, the crookedest street. Yes. <laughs> Philadelphia, they'll throw batteries at people, though. <laughs> <laughs> Philadelphia is the only... As far as I know, I could be wrong, but it's the only um, like football stadium that has a jail. 
What? Yeah, I because know that. Yeah. <laughs> like even if the te- even if like the Eagles win, the crowd riots. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so the next question, you don't if you don't if you feel uncomfortable answering, don't worry. You could always move on. Um, you are in a relationship now, correct? Um, and I'm always curious about how kinky people meet. So how did you two meet? <laughs> My parents set us up on a blind date. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's a good one. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Build a day now. Oh, he worked with my dad. Uh, he was a co-op, and um, my mom, and my dad, always talk on the phone, and uh, it was great because um, I was on the phone with my mom, or well, I was in the car with my mom, and my dad was at work with my husband, and um, my mom says, "Oh, your dad wants to talk to you," and on the other end, I guess my dad said, "Oh." my wife wants to talk to you. And I get on the phone, I blather along like, you know, I'm talking to my dad and he says, hello. I'm like, oh, wow, this is really awkward. <laughs> and we just set up a date because it was clear they wanted us to go on a date and it worked out 15 years later. <laughs> wow. Yeah. All right, the king rabbit hole goes deep. There are things that I'm into now I never thought I'd be into. Like for example, I'll say this again. I never thought I'd own a bunch of French made outfits, a male dress device, and a real straight jacket. Um, so, you know, what are some new things, even though you're experienced, you know, you have, you know, you have years under your belt and everything like that. What are some new things that you're interested in that you're just beginning out trying? Um, well, I was just talking with uh, one of my female submissives the other day, and we actually kind of brought this up about like new kinks and things that I want to try. And I was telling her, I said, you know, I love financial domination as a top, but I kind of want to try it from a bottom point of view. And um, actually, yes, I would love to, I'd love to do that. I'd love to take a dom to dinner, um, go out shopping with her, and then play afterwards. But I just love that kind of like whole dynamic. And there's something about the financial component for me that's just like, oh, that's a new like boing. Uh, so that's something I'd probably want to try um, from a bottom perspective. And if there's a client out there who wants to pay for that experience. <laughs> um, but from a topping point of view, I mean, I definitely want to um, expand the things that I do. And one of the things that I want to do more of is more blood play. I want to do more fire play. Um, those are probably my top ones. More outdoor scenes. Oh, wow, yeah. Yeah. And now, hey, the weather's getting better now, so. Yes. My friend, the Lady of Sin, she's a pagan love witch. She, um, she, she chases men in the woods with knives. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> what like, she, she catches them. She, she, human sacrifice. Oh, I love it. Yeah. <laughs> Not real, but you know. <laughs> One of these days I'm gonna see her on the news and be like. <laughs> <laughs> Here all, right. all for fun. <laughs> <laughs> all right, BDSM on a budget. Now, I highly recommend that if anybody has the money, support professionals, support um, quality products. But it's not always about professional and products and stuff like that. Let's say you're a person or a couple, or in a couple, you want to be kinky, but you just don't have money. So what are some ways to still be kinky, but spend little to no money at all? Well, first of all, I'd say kink starts in the head. So, you know, a lot of um, DS can just start with things like role play. Um, if you're looking to buy things, I'd say just look around your house. I mean, I just bought a, I went on a shopping trip with one of my subs and we bought a spatula and it's, 
one of my favorite impact toys right now. <laughs> but, you know, you can kinkify a lot of stuff. I went to a great class at the Fetish Flea once on um, all the kinky things you can do with bandanas and scarves, um, things that you can easily find in the house to um, bind someone that is a lot cheaper than, you know, expensive hemp rope and stuff like that. Um, but absolutely. And then use those panties to bind too. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, my friend Ursa Minor, she, she uses pillowcases. She takes pillowcases off. Shout out. My my dom, Miss Melissa, she um she just found a um a ruler, a wooden ruler from the third grade. <gasps> it's only it's it's only like six inches, right? That but they thing, hurt like hell. <laughs> they hurt like crazy. It <laughs> was red with these little kind of like rectangles. <laughs> oh, yeah, they're great. You can find some. And, and pillowcases work great as hoods. As do paper bags, which can be very humiliating. Okay. What would you like when it comes to um, femdom and dominatrixes and stuff like that? What would you like to see in the future? Oh God, um, what would I like to see in the future? I'd like to see it um, legalized. <laughs> Definitely. Uh, um, I would like to see it more acceptable um, for people to see a dominatrix um, for therapeutic purposes. It's certainly not, it's not therapy but it can be therapeutic for people to yeah, um, to act out things or just, you know, get their rocks off in a way um, that's erotic. Um, and I would definitely like to see more couples exploring. Um, doms are such a great place to go to for anything. We're, we're so open. We've heard just about everything. Um, and we're really accepting and, you know, not, I mean, I'm not going to say there's exceptions to this rule, but no one's going to like ick your yums and, you know, the things that you really like. If anything, we'll just say, you know, it's not our thing, um, but it's a great and refer you to somebody. And but, one thing um, I think people take for granted is that, um, you know, doms are human beings. They're people. They're. I mean, they, even though I do all this, I'm not kinky a hundred percent. Like I don't wake up and start whipping people or get whipped or you know like, go into the shower, make sure it's like blazing hot because I, I'm a masochist or anything like that. You know, uh, we're we live our own lives. We live regular lives too. We just happen to be very very kinky. We're human beings, you know, and we have feelings and we have responsibilities and we have you know our concerns and cares and everything. Okay. Rapid fire recommendations. Got it. And they don't have to be kink related at all. And they never go rapid fire. All right. Recommend a film. The Last Unicorn. <laughs> That's actually a really psychedelic film. It's my favorite movie of all time. It's my Dom's favorite movie too. Um, okay, recommend a book. Everything is Fucked by Mark Manson. What's that about? Um, it's kind of like a, I wouldn't say a deep dive, but it kind of pulls together all these ideas of why the world is the way it is, you know, when it comes to things like tribalism, um, the way our politics are today. Um, it talks a lot about hope and the psychology of hope and our own personal narratives. Um, it definitely kind of delves into like thinking brains versus feeling brains and why we tend to make decisions the way we make decisions. Um, and it's mainly because we have feelings, um, not that we're rational beings, um, but it's a great book. I am listening to it for the second time on audiobook uh, because it was so dense in some of the, uh, in some of the uh, chapters that I want to just listen to it again, really kind of cement it in there. Okay. Um, recommend a song. Return to Innocence by Enigma. Oh, Enigma. Yes. 
Sai de moda. All right, recommend a piece. Recommend a piece of art, and it could be any medium. It could be painting, sculpture, drawing. It could be famous. It could be your next door neighbor. It doesn't matter. Um, just recommend a piece of art. Time unveiling truth by Giovanni Battista, I think. Really, I heard about that. All right, recommend a television show. Buffy the Vampire Slayer. I heard it's better than the movie. Uh, they each have their own. They each have their own qualities. Like it, I wouldn't necessarily pit one against the other. The uh, the movie was really cheesy and campy, and if you like cheesy and campy, that's totally for you. The other one's a little darker, um, and I just like it because at the time I was really into David Boreanaz. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <coughs> Excuse me. Re recommend a meal. Oh, God. It's hard for me to choose a food because I love food. Um, but I think meals tend to be more about like the experience. So I'm going to say Yvonne's in Boston. Um, because they have all these like tapas style um, yeah. foods, which I love, and amazing drinks, and the decor in there is so fucking sexy. Okay. Now, um, <clears throat> I was going to play the three word game, but I don't know. I'm feeling kind of loose. Are you ready for the other game? It's a little longer. Sure. I'm ready for anything. Oh, wait. We have a question. Ah, do you have ball busting videos for sale? I do not. Um, the only videos I do are um, custom videos. And that is something that you would have to um, contact me via my website for. Okay. And now when it comes to custom videos, when I say the word weird or strange, I mean that in a, in a good way. All right? mm -hmm. I'm not kink shaming. So what would you say the most either bizarre, weirdest, or let's just say most unique request you've had? <clears throat> so the most unique request I've had was um, <clears throat> crushing. And the person wanted me to crush crustaceans and live things, which is definitely a hard limit for me. Um, crushing food and stuff like that I'm totally into because it is a very sensual process. but. Besides that, yeah, I wouldn't go into anything live. Okay. Oh, Starboy Nick. Here's a new one. He hasn't been here. Hi, Starboy Nick. Mistress, do you think 4.5 inches penis size is good to be a bull in cuckold relationship? Depends on the size of the other man. Good point. And also, I think it also depends on the mental aspect of it, on how mm -hmm. it that's done too. <clears throat> Interesting question, Starboy Nick. Thank you very much. Okay. <clears throat> we're reaching the end, but we gotta do the game first. And then we were gonna do the third the, th the three word game. That's quick and easy. This is a little I don't know, I'm in a loose mood today. So <clears throat> this is the word association game. Got now, it. I'm gonna say a word or phrase. Everything I say is off the top of my head. Okay. So we're on the same level, okay? And it's kink related. You say the first word that comes to your head, okay? So if I say chastity, you might Help. say you may say lock, but let's say you're thinking of tapas. Mm -hmm. If I say chastity, and you, you could say tapas. Mm -hmm. Or tapas, what I don't know, I forget how it's pronounced. But um, there's no wrong answer at all. Got it. The, the rule, rule number one is say the first thing that comes into your head. Okay. Um, rule number two is we don't kink shame. So um, if if I say something, just say not my thing. Mm -hmm. Okay. What else? What else? Yes. Everything's off the top of my head. Um, but then we have the jar. Now the jar... Tangle Blue, oh, Tangle Blue, I, Tangle Blue is a submissive kitten mm -hmm. who does a lot of work for your kinky friends. She, I love her so much. 
Um, we have a very absurd, silly sense of humor. Um, some of this is kink related. Some of this is absolute nonsense. I don't know what I'm pulling out this jar. So we may get a little silly here. Okay. All right. And, um, I believe that's it for the rules. Yeah. So you ready? I'm ready. Um, okay. All right. Well, before we go to the jar, let's do this. All right. Floggers. Whipping. St. Andrew's Cross. Butts. Latex. Shiny. Blood play. Fun. Needles. Blood. Choking. Uh, breath. French maid outfits. Hot. <laughs> okay. Um, smothering. Butts. <laughs> Fire play. Hot. Strap on dildos. Big. Big. Okay. Let's go to the jar. Oh, this one again. Boing. Dicks. <laughs> oh, thighs. Sweet dick. Bonus. Brown coat. Candy. <laughs> Fingers. Chocolate. Mew, mew, mew. Oh, kitties. <laughs> what is this? Sassy. Brats. All right, hair pulling. Uh, hair tie. All right. Um, public humiliation. On the ground. Water sports. Mm, warm. And finally, we reach the end. Scat. Brown. Yeah, uh, that's. <laughs> <laughs> Jonathan, in. Jonathan in for the Lobos asks, what is the most sadistic thing you have done? Uh, that's a hard question because it's all about perspective. Honestly, I would say the worst, the most sadistic is usually like the mind fucks. And there's nothing like taking someone who's totally new to... Um, kink and seeing a dom for the first time knows nothing about me really and um finding them down putting a blindfold on them after showing them some of the awful tools you're going to use on them and then proceeding to use some of those tools because <laughs> their headspace is usually like holy fuck what the hell did i get myself into <laughs> And Starboy Nick is back. Mistress, the other guy is my friend with the same dick size, and he wants me to fuck her her wife, but also want to get cuckold along with him by her wife. What should I do? Hey, if everybody's game, fuck it. <laughs> yeah, do it. You only live once. Life is short, my friend. Hell yeah, and sex is good. Sex is good. Life is short. Okay, we have reached the end. We've been in. We've been an hour. We could do a part two and panel shows and everything like that. So hopefully you'll be back again if it's up to. You. That's up to you, of course. I'd love to. Oh, wonderful! So take this time to promote anything and everything you want. Your links. If you have any events coming up, even if it's non kink related, you know, um, go. Um, well, you know, check out my website. Um, and if you're interested in a session, please do fill out my booking form. Um, besides that, I am on Twitter and Instagram. That's easily found on my website. Um, and I have started writing a blog. I'm in the midst of writing my second one. You can find that on my website as well. As for events, you can usually find me always at DomCon, and if you are attending, please feel free to reach out. Um, I'm usually pretty comfortable, you know, grabbing a quick drink or a coffee or something like that. 
um, at events. So, you know, if you see something on FetLife um, that I'm attending that you'll be at, feel free to reach out. I usually kind of go lax at some of the events um, and really let my, my lifestyle um, play her out. So feel free to do so. Cool. Stay on the line after we're done. Um, real quick, everybody, I'm Nicholas Tanik. Go to yourkinkyfriends.com. Check us out on YouTube. You're at YouTube. Um, oh, plays at ACC. Do you have your own YouTube channel? I do not. <laughs> You're just going to have to watch it through mine, my friend. So, um, yeah, go to yourkinkyfriends.com. We have a Discord chat group, which is really fun. I'm on Twitter at Nicholas Tanik. Um, your kinky friends, the whole crew's there at Friends Kinky. Uh, they're on Instagram at Friends Kinky. Fed Life is your kinky friends, all one word. Um, even even um, Facebook. Hit me up on Facebook, Nicholas Tanik, and we have a, a YKF group. It's secret; no one will know you're in it, and it's almost a thousand people. Um, for a Facebook group, that's pretty crazy. So, um, and I knew this was coming. Amy Lotus, do you do toilet training? Um, I do not offer brown showers, but I am more than happy to uh, please those golden shower folks. Okay. All right. So, like I said, we reached the end. Um, oh, my God. It's getting late, my friends. <laughs> my Dom is calling me. Remember the cardinal rule. Oh God! Hold on a second, Alex. Nicholas, you left my question. What was your question? Oh, okay. Mistress, how can I become your your sissy wife? And do you love to do you love to be called daddy? I do love to be called daddy, um, but I'm not going to take on any new sissy wives. Okay. Okay. And like I said before, it's getting late, my friends. Mm -hmm. My dom is calling me. And remember the cardinal rule, everybody. Be cool, be kind, and keep an open mind. Have a great weekend. Have a great night. Take care. Bye.